Uh, there is going to be a bigger patch that is coming out soon. Today we actually have some pretty big news to go over that came out on Thursday. The thing is that nobody really noticed it being announced because it was from a fairly small stream. In this video we'll be going over a few clips of the Couch Corp stream which is on the Borderlands Twitch channel every Thursday. This episode was hosted by Elisa Melendez who is the new media manager but also voices Tyreen. It's a generally straightforward Couch Corp series where they talk to various people from Gearbox developers and the like and in this episode she was joined by Grant Cow, who is a combat designer and in this they talk about the recent patch that went out on Thursday, they talk about other changes that people have asked for and also alluded to a big patch, in their own words a big patch, that should be coming fairly soon and what that may entail. But first of all, who is Grant Cow? what does he do? To give us some context. Uh, so I'm involved in all loops of the combat and in Borderlands 3 uh, that involves from the creation of gear to the balancing of character skills, uh, passives, action skills, anointed gear, weapons, grenades, shields, the whole gamut. So like, okay. all of those things. So I take it uh, for things like hot fixes and stuff, we're yelling at you? Yes. <laughs> and I guess the most important information to go over is that he is the one that writes the patch notes. I write the patch notes, I try to provide as much context and commentary in there because uh, I want uh, fans to know that like we are, uh, we're not changing things willy-nilly, we're trying to make sure that we take in the feedback that you guys give us, we are uh, looking at all the builds, we're looking at all the, di uh, the different variety of um, gameplay styles that mm -hmm. each character can, can provide. And we're trying to make sure that we increase versus decrease the number of uh, build varieties and build stuff. So, like, um, I try to make sure that we, we, you know, if we do make an adjustment that potentially might affect your build, that there's a reason to it and mm -hmm. not just because we, you know, we dislike some number or, or whatnot. Now, like I said, we'll go over all of the recent hotfix changes that went out on Thursday, the revert to Flax nerf, the Moe's changes, stuff with Zane and Amara as well. But again, just to reiterate, play that clip again at the start of the video, confirmation that there is a big patch of sorts heading our way. Uh, there is going to be a bigger patch that is coming out soon. Um, mm -hmm. And I am going to do my damnedest uh, to make sure that we can have some folks on uh, to talk about that. When it happens, um, you, you, you've set the bar pretty high, Grant. Not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a lot of people that want to share the stuff they've worked on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so hopefully, you know, we're going to have a whole bunch of people uh, coming through and hanging out with us on the co-op couch um, to talk about all of that jazz. So a few questions come up from this. When will that patch hit and what will it include? Well, we actually get some big hints to what the patch may include. We'll start there first. The first one is a major change that people have been asking for, including myself, since like week one of the game being out. Buffs to Moes and Flack around their companions and their pets, including the Iron Bear. Listen to this. I got approval to talk about. We also have some things that we can that we can talk about that's coming in the future that we are working on. Things Yay. that we are looking at at the very least. Mm -hmm. um, one of the big things uh, for, from the character side of things is survivability for pets. Um, or, or like companions like the Digiclone or the Iron Bear, mm -hmm. um, especially in the may higher Mayhem levels. Oh yeah, definitely had some Iron Bear requests too. Yeah, we're definitely looking at that. We're finding the right ways to do it. Um, and uh, we're making sure that, you know, uh, that those that enjoy being in the mech or those that enjoy, uh, uh, you know, using the Digiclone, you're, 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 gonna, have, you're gonna be okay. Like we're, we're looking at ways to do it and, and that's coming. Now this is pretty big. Like I mentioned, this was one of the things I spoke about in the most endgame video where I said everything feels pretty good on her in what you can build around, just that the Iron Bear does not scale well once you get into the Mayhem modifiers. Speaking of which, there are some changes to that coming soon which we'll go over a little bit later, but generally going back to the Iron Bear mech and Flax pets, it's nice to hear that changes are coming to them. I guess the only surprising thing is that they're looking at survivability when, to be honest, I think damage is the problem both out of the pets and out of the mech. So they mentioned Flax Pets, the Iron Bear, but they also very loosely mentioned Zane, who in their own words is a character that they're looking very closely on and will have more changes coming to, but they don't allude to what. This is the general gist of what will be in this next patch, whatever it is. Zane was looked at and still being looked at. Um, uh, it, it takes a little while to go through all the data uh, and you know, uh, we want to make sure we, we do it right. So we have some ideas uh, for Zane. We, oh, speaking of Moe's, we wanted to address the means of destruction. Like we, oh. we added that uh, cooldown that 
to the the AMLA region like we did for FLAC, but we also toned that back down because we have a permanent fix coming in, in the near, near future. So um, we're trying to make sure that like infinite grenade mose isn't the only play style for that tree. Um, and uh, we're looking at ways to increase survivability with Iron Bear. The one thing they did mention about Zane specifically was the violent momentum talent where the more you move, the more damage that you do. And much like we highlighted in a previous Zane video, a lot of that kind of stuff doesn't work. This is what they said about that one specifically, but I guess people are still looking into that. Uh, did have, it does work incorrectly, um, but we feel like it could scale even more uh, when based off your move speed. Uh, there was one of the ones where the community caught and said that maybe it was working, maybe it wasn't working, but we confirmed it is working. And um, it just, ooh, that hurt. It just doesn't feel like it sometimes because the range isn't uh, as high as we, we want it to be. So we're looking into that and adjusting that. That was good. Before we talk about when this patch is coming, TLDR, I think it's going to be coming next week. I did want to mention a big thing that people bring up every time we have hotfix videos of buffs and nerfs coming into the game. What about performance? Performance of the game is still pretty bad, for myself included. I'm playing on like ultra low settings and still unable to like, I don't know, watch a YouTube video on another monitor without performance tanking. And sometimes the menus just tank the performance anyway. This is what they said about performance and the difference between hotfix and the patching and why I feel it's going to be a patch, not a hotfix, next week. So performance is more than just a number tweak or a lever that we, I can pull, and or I or the team can pull. Mm -hmm. Performance is a top to down look at all our things in the game, from the um, from loading a menu, from to looking at a piece of art, to shooting a gun, to throwing a grenade, like all those things, like or to like a, a visual effect that pops up when a, an explosion happens. Mm -hmm. Like all those things go into uh, how we monitor and analyze and fix performance. And that isn't a one person job. That's like a multidisciplinary, multi-team tackling type of uh, responsibility. Um, on top of that, when we do find those kinds of fixes, like it is not a quick little lever that we can turn. It is a very deep rooted, like we need to go in and inject some kind of adjustment here and there. And that, you know, that takes a lot of uh, prep and a lot of uh, testing and, uh, you know, and making sure we, we get it right. We definitely want to make sure that we can do other things while teams are looking at performance. So that's everything they said about performance. More changes will be coming. But like I mentioned, I think we're going to get a flat out patch next week because these tend to take a couple of weeks before they go in for certification. Much like Grant mentioned, they have to go over every aspect of the game to make sure that the patches that they put through don't have bugs, that don't break people's PlayStation 4s or consoles, those kind of areas. Whereas hotfixes, because they're just changing numbers, they're just upping the damage a little bit or not, they don't need to worry about those kind of hotfixes crashing the game because it is just a numerical value change. So performance requires a bit more time to not only implement in comparison to a hotfix, but also it has to go through certification for consoles. So a patch just doesn't blow up a PlayStation, you know what I mean? So if I was to guess, there's going to be a patch next week with some more performance stuff, but also we'll include a hotfix going over changes to Moz, Flak, Zane. It sounds like they've pretty much confirmed that they are coming. With Grant said at the start of it that he is allowed to talk about these changes. So at this point, Gearbox must be pretty much ready to put these out next week, if I was to guess. But but not only that, we are expecting in about three weeks time from this video going out, the Halloween event, going off the event lineup that's going on at the moment with the boss spawns and the rare mob spawns that are happening at the moment, would line up very nicely to a patch going out next week with the Iridium event. And then two weeks after that, you'll have the Halloween event, which will also probably be a patch as opposed to a hotfix. That's when I'm assuming it's going to come out. We've gone over quite a lot, but I did also want to mention some pretty big changes that could be coming to Mayhem mode and generally Generally where Gearbox stand on stuff like the reflect damage back modifiers that everybody is basically saying are pretty bad because they're not very fun. Uh, on top of being uh, related to uh, the character balance and uh, gear and whatnot, I also designed Mayhem mode. Hey, look at you! So that's a good question. Mayhem is definitely one of the areas that we want to uh, keep expanding on um, and keep have it uh, evolve and kind of meet what players' expectations of Mayhem are. Mm. Uh, and you know the goal of Mayhem at, at the inception of the, uh, the feature was to 
um, allow for players to kind of replay all the maps, farm all the bosses, uh, and complete all the side missions that they want um, at a uh, at a higher difficulty, but also at a uh, uh, with modifiers that kind of you know not force you, but to um, promote mm. finding new gear and new class mods and and changing your build up a little bit to kind of overcome some of the penalties and. Uh, obviously, some of the penalties that we feel are, are might be a little too uh, too rough. Uh, bullet reflect being one of them. Uh, I know that's a that's a that's one that fans are are not happy about. Um, and we're <coughs> probably going to make an adjustment there too. So uh, that that's definitely happening in the near future. Near, near future. So mm. um, am amongst other things. So yeah, bullet reflect is definitely one that I can talk about and say like, yeah, you know, it didn't hit. Didn't exactly do what we wanted it to do, so uh, we'll make adjustments there. More changes will be coming to legendary guns and anointed guns in the future, but first we need to talk about the previous changes that came to legendaries as it goes nicely onto their plans for future legendary gun changes. So this is what they said about the gunnerang and the creeping death guns that were recently hot fixed and buffed on Thursday. These are the <laughs> weapons that like were like way below performance and, and we, we just quickly you know put a number in um, to try to adjust them upwards um, and there's more coming uh, these are just a few of them but we have to test all of the ones that are coming we have over 200 unique items uh, 200 legendary unique items and we have way more unique items than that so we are going through the whole list um, and we're looking at all of the legendary ones and these are the ones that got in this week and you know we're, we're, there will be more coming and the, with the goal of increasing build diversity like hopefully some of these uh, add to the build. Uh, we want some of the Atlas weapons to come into play. We, we like Atlas uh, Atlas builds with the homing and whatnot. So, mm. uh, you know, the carrier got a big buff, um, and uh, we also increased like we we added creeping death to the loot loot drops last week. Uh, and uh, fortunately, we forgot to change the number. So this time, now it's back. And the creeping death is a really strong weapon. So nice. So Gearbox, bit by bit, are going through each of the 200 legendaries, looking at the ones that are very weak, such as the Creeper Death, which was awful before they changed it. Now it's a little bit better, but I wouldn't say it's top tier. But they are going through them, trying to buff up the worst ones. But there are a couple of legendaries that are a little bit too good that they're probably looking to bring down a little bit. Sometimes we look at, we have to look at all items that could re reduce or, or, or affect that goal. And in the future, uh, and in the coming weeks, uh, there'll be multiple adjustments to gear pieces. Mm. And some of the ones include the most popular gear out there. Um, we have to look at, uh, and, I, and I'll, be, I'll be specific about it too, yeah. because uh, uh, you know I, I'm the one that, that's involved in, in adjusting gear like uh, Hellwalker, Laida. Mm. Uh, we know they're very popular. I do not want to, to, to uh, completely destroy their gameplay, but yeah. <laughs> they, are, they are definitely overperforming. Okay. And then um, we have over a hundred other legendaries that are un that we we think that can use you know increases here and there, and we're going to go through them and make sure that you know uh, if we do make adjustments to the popular ones like Hellwalker and Lilayuda, that we bring other ones up mm -hmm. so that it's not like a even trade off. It's more like a slight adjustment to. Um, the Lyuda and the Hellwalker, and and then a great large adjustment to bring in other things up to meet those kind of promises like the, like, that the Lyuda and the Hellwalker offer too. Oh, hell so. This goes up to a really key point that I see in a lot of the comments. Why do Gearbox need to nerf it? It's a PvE game. All legendary should be strong. Like, Zayn should be able to one-shot stuff. Why are you nerfing it? That doesn't make any sense. You're just making the game more on the fun. And whilst I do agree to an extent, Grant did have an answer on why they balance and how they balance a PvE game like Borderlands differently to a PvP one such as the likes of Overwatch, but more specific to Gearbox, Battleborn. And I think it's a really good answer that's worth listening to. How does that compare? Balance for Borderlands is is different than a competitive multiplayer game where there's you know player versus player. Uh, we we have a goal with Borderlands, and that was a goal from the very beginning, which was to increase the amount of uh, play styles, uh, build diversities, um, uh, uh, just in general build diversity across the board. And we added that we did that by adding multiple action skills by adding a lot more legendaries, by adding artifacts, uh, anointed gear, um, but there's a lot of vectors to this. And we wanted to, and sometimes 
uh, when there's an item that's so strong, so much stronger than other items, the build diversity gets limited, and people start gravitating towards one build and ignoring other points in other passives or other action skills. So when there is when that negative behavior happens, we try to make a correction. Mm. Um, but in general, our goal is to uh, make fun, insane power synergies. Mm -hmm. uh, we want you to find those things, and we want you to combine them to make your character as OP as you, know, as you can. And uh, we want to support that notion. Um, so that's how we balance. That, that, that's the overarching goal of Borderlands. Anytime uh, we see one build start overtaking others because of an item disparity, because mm -hmm. of an item is you know, dictating like, oh yeah, yeah, this is definitely the best way to play, mm -hmm. then we try to make an adjustment. But we don't ever want to remove that play style. We just want to make sure that we enhance other ones at the same time. So there's never a, you know, it, it's never a one-way street. It's always up and down. I'm not necessarily saying that I agree with him 100%, but I do think it gives us a lot of context and perspective to where Gearbox's head is at with these balance changes. And personally, I don't mind. Not only does it give me some pretty interesting stuff to talk about and having experienced all of the Vault Hunters, I can pretty much relate to each of the changes, but also I want to see builds for Flak being more exciting than just a fade away gorilla in a mist, King's Call one shot in a boss. To me, that's not fun. There needs to be a challenge. And if there isn't any challenge, this game just isn't going to be as fun as something like Destiny, which I think has a better upward curve to get in towards the end game. I think to an extent Borderlands is suffering a little bit from what Anthem is suffering from, which isn't a really good sign if I'm honest, but it does depend on future stuff and the Mayhem modifiers and DLCs and all that, and the raid bosses and takedowns of course. But now I want to go over the recent changes on Thursday, starting with the Flak nerf revert, and generally where the head's at with Flak at the moment. Uh, we needed code help to try to inject a, a cooldown into um, the ammo return. Uh, and when we got code help, uh, we, we set a value, and then we planned on changing it, and then we tested it, and then uh, the change, the first change happened, but the second change didn't happen. So this is an adjustment. So Ow! this was like, we never really intended, especially from the, from the character designer, we never really intended for it to have a two second delay. Mm. Um, we wanted it to be shorter, but this is just a kind of like a, uh, it, we got the cooldown in, but we we just didn't manage to change the delay. So it's back to 0.3 seconds. It's not like it's the crazy delay that two seconds was uh, for you to return your ammo. So um, don't worry, Flak players. We love you. <laughs> We're not trying to destroy you. Yeah. And lots of us here at the studio, we main Flak also. Flak's one of our favorites. So, you know, we're not trying to destroy Flak. We're, we're, we, are, <laughs> we love we're, Flak. Yeah, we love Flak. <laughs> I think Flak is in a really good spot. They are certainly a lot stronger than they used to be, of course with this nerf being reverted, but I would like to see more happen to the other skill trees that they have, especially around the pet. It feels like it's just pointless with how much time they've invested into making this character based around having a pet, yet they're not very good. So we'll see on that. But also Moz did get a nerf with the Bloodletter mod, the one that is focused around having more shields and health and having your shields recharge a lot quicker. It was been exploited in some manner. I think Grant explains it pretty well here. Yeah, so the class mod, uh, it, it, the focus was on regeneration, and what, what players were doing was using the, uh, the actual base shield of effects to, uh, to manipulate some of the regeneration problems. Um, and it was creating like a, 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 a relationship that we weren't comfortable with, so we ended up just reducing some of the, uh, the base shield recharge delays and rates so that um, you still had some penalties uh, in the class mod, and while like we still re retaining some of the regeneration from the actual class mod. So we didn't want to nerf any of the regen or reduce or adjust <laughs> the regeneration <laughs> rates, but we wanted to adjust the fact that like the shield was just overpowered uh, across the board. Yeah. Or the, or sorry, class mod was making shields overpowered across the board. Right. I did mention anointed weapons. I think this is a big area that Gearbox can improve on. For example, Amara's anointed weapons are really, really good. I don't think they should be nerfed, but they are miles ahead, especially of the likes of Zane's, Flax, and Moses' anointed weapons that don't provide the same sort of stuff. But Grant did go over the previous changes to anointed weapons for Zane and Flak, but also future anointed weapon changes that will be coming fairly soon, and where their eyes are on specifically. Yeah, so with Zane, we're, we're, we're constantly trying to increase the, uh, the Zane's damage output, and we realized that one of the anointed parts, like for, for all classes, uh, Zane's was a little bit below uh, what we wanted for the Digicone swap, and we increased the damage of that dramatically. Uh, and also, uh, we wanted to kind of 
uh, provide a boost to the rack players for flak. So the rack damage increase was dramatically increased. So that uh, if you wanted to play like a support rack flak role, <laughs> support rack. Yeah, flak. say that three times fast. Support <laughs> rack flak. Uh, you can, and it's a great co-op build. It's a great teamwork uh, build. So if you have an anointed uh, weapon that could increase the damage of the target taken, um, then you know you can be a support rack flak. Yeah, so Anointed is definitely one of the uh, gear progression levels that we want uh, to... Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. I might need you. <laughs> or not. Thank nice. you. Uh, Anointed is definitely one of the avenues where we want to increase build diversity. Uh, you'll be seeing a lot of uh, adjustments there uh, in the future where we can promote uh, new builds or new interactions between uh, skills and gear. Um, so yes, we are definitely looking at anointed gear. That's why you saw two this week with uh, Zane and Flack. Mm -hmm. um, expect to see more in the future. And uh, it's definitely one of the, uh, the this Goliath. I know, right? Definitely one of the uh, avenues we're looking at to uh, increase, to, to promote our goal of build diversity. So. Right. We've gone over some pretty interesting stuff here that I've not seen highlighted anywhere else, but I did want to finish on something that I thought was kind of cute, actually. Grant has his own weapon in the game, and it makes a lot of sense when you look at it. This is what it is. I also noticed that, uh, I don't know if you noticed, Lisa, but you guys gave me my gun. <gasps> what do you mean your gun? This is the KO, the KOs. No way! Yeah. That's so cool. That was not intentional. That yeah. was just a lucky coincidence. <laughs> Great job. The Chaos is a pretty good gun, to be honest. I like the way that it looks. It reminds me of the Destiny 2 weapons, and I do like just how it plays. And It's decent. It's not the best gun in the game. I'm surprised that Grant hasn't made his own gun the best in the game, but that's everything that I wanted to go over today. So, like I sort of mentioned, I haven't seen anywhere else pick up on this. I just found the stream by chance, and I couldn't believe the amazing information that came out of it with like less than 100 people watching or something ridiculous like that. Let me know if you like this video, like and subscribe if you haven't already, it really does help me out and enjoy your weekend. Take care, see you then.